the media has done, you know, the brainwashing that's going on, or the brain, the brain yeah. filthing that's going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's preposterous. We're being programmed by the programs. Oh, almost literally. Like yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, like they, you know, where you click is is now. But you ask me about hating Trump. It's why do people hate Trump? It's because they've been programmed to hate Trump. Yeah. Most people did not arrive at this conclusion themselves, because if they did, they would have concluded in 2010, and he was quite likable in 2010. Yeah. Whatever you know. Again, I don't want to be political, but, but, but is, what, what he, Trump is saying this, this system, is, he's the outsider. He's not part of the system. Right. As opposed to you know, your two parties, which are really one, this guy comes from the outside. He's going to rock the boat. But when the, when the boat is rocked, it, it, it can be steered in, in a different direction, and, that's, and that's, that's my hope. Right, I hear that. And it's a, it's a real hope because people are searching for genuine change. What do you think is at risk? Everything. I mean, you live in a gated, you have, you have a gate around your house. Yeah. Do you, you have a gun? Yeah. <laughs> Not My that parent, <laughs> we didn't have a gun in the house. We didn't think of that. When, grew up, when I grew up, I don't have one today, but, but I should. Right, meaning you think you should. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that our say that our actual safety it, it could be threatened in a real way. I mean, I lived through the riots in Crown Heights. You probably did also. You, you, yeah, my family was, I was six years old. My family was upstate. We stayed upstate. Oh, you're, you're, you're so, but I, I, I came in the day after the, the kid was run, was run over. So the big, the big thing had already happened. But the, I saw people, people marching down the streets, how Hitler, and they meant it. When you saw these Black Lives Matter, now I, I, I'm not against blacks. I don't want to speak, you know, politically. You know, not, but yeah. those were that was a scary situation. Places were being burnt down. Now, really, and it was spreading. And there were, and it was being encouraged. Right. Can you imagine? And then, and times are still good. Our economy, I mean, I'm not an economist, I don't, no, I don't read Dalio, so, so I don't know, no, or, or no, no, all these, not no, to speak, you know, I don't, I don't like to speak in areas which I'm an expert. But it sure, it sure looks like our, sci our economy is being held, held together by chewing gum. <laughs> and it's only so long that chewing gum is going to last. Mm. And so times are then times were good, and there were still riots. Can you imagine? But times were good. There was also a lot of free time, and there weren't sports going on. Yeah. There weren't sports games, but yeah. But if the, but no, we, that was very scary. Yeah, and when times get bad... It was very scary the way it was encouraged, minimized. The media would call them peaceful riots, peaceful protests, while they, you know, there were videos of uh, stores burning and looting and... Yeah, and people being scary. shot, and you know, and people on, on, on the other side shooting back. I mean, I, I, I lived in Israel for thirty years. I served in the army. I, I held I had a gun in my hand. I was taught how to use it. It's a very terrible thing when you see a person shot in front of you. Mm -hmm. I, like, again, I, 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 was, I was Chicago in 1968. 
we, you know, no, this idea of like, why kill somebody in a war? Why should people die mean, and die for what? Just spoke to me, it's a very human level. Forget about it from Yiddish yes. Just like, hey, humanity, be a mensch. Respect another person. See that person as a person. He, his life is valuable because he, God created him and gave him a life. So respect that. And that's, again, that, cut the Torah myths out of it for a second. Just right, humanity. Just So if there's an urgent call, there was an urgent call from the rabbi in 1990, to, to what? Meaning practically to, to what? Because it feels bigger than anything you can do or I can do. To what? What's the call to? Look, I don't know what the urgent call would be today because, like, hey, the other side ain't so great either. You know, like, let's be honest. No, it's not a political thing. It's not yeah. a, yeah, this is not... One side or another, I think what you said was correct. The boat needs to be rocked, and you have one person willing to rock it. So, and ho- and hopefully when, when the boat is being rocked, I'd like to we, you know, I th- see I think, things differently. I think the greatest evidence of that, um, of being careful to pick like a side too, careful, too, too closely, is what recently happened with Candace Owens, and a lot of this podcast has been about the rabbi work. Candace Owens was a, a darling of many religious people for... Yeah. For a while. So she said things that uh, some agreed with. But she clearly wasn't very knowledgeable. She clearly, um, like I, I saw her once on a podcast with, uh, I think it was Joe Rogan. And he was asking her questions about climate change. And she was just saying things that were right-wing talking points. They weren't really thought through. She didn't understand them. They weren't backed up by real knowledge or facts. She just was somewhat articulate and said it. And but it was paper thin as soon as he asked two or three questions. I'm not even talking about the truth of the matter. I'm yeah. talking about just her knowledge of the subject she was talking about. It was non-existent. That's why I don't, that's why I don't speak about the issues. <laughs> that's what, not really, because I don't know. You know like, right, but what, I'm, what I'm, my point is, is that... What I do know... About now she's tur- right now she's turned in a lot of ways in the last year. She's anti, from an anti-Semitic standpoint and most recently talking very negatively uh, about the Rebbe. And I think what the lesson for that for us is not to fall in love with any particular party. Oh. There's there, there there isn't a home there for us, even if even if Trump has religious grandchildren. There isn't a home there at all. But there is that being said, if there is someone willing to rock the boat and the boat right, needs to be rocked, so the boat needs to be rocked. So yeah, okay, right, we'll maybe you reluctantly go, but it's not an, it's not an allegiance to a party. It's not an allegiance to, to a person. Not to a person. Yes. No, and, and look, but also one of the things I, I actually like, I, I don't I don't know who Candace Owens is. I've, I've barely, you know, I've seen her name. I, I've seen, as you said, I, she she was once tout, touted highly. So so I looked. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that, you know. But but I don't, you know, it's, it's not my business, and it's not where I where, 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 where my life to be focused. I right. think that's also a very important thing, by the way. By reading the newspapers, is it good, is it going to make a difference one bit? If you spend that same time learning a word of Torah, you'd be adding godly energy to the world, and adding and changing your own life to the better. Any moment which you're not doing that, everyone that would always speak about the Vim Batalim. Divin Batalim doesn't, he's, it's not Divin Masurim. You're not speaking Lush and Horina, or you're not speaking something bad about somebody. No slander, no lies. Just wasted words. It's not particularly meaningful. You're not doing anything with your life at that moment. And the devil wanted every moment of our lives to be productive, powerful, directed to a purpose, directed to a godly goal, godly goal and to spread light in this world. So that's what we, what we should be doing. So to and there's a very real factor that he, by doing that, like when the Rebbe, when the Rebbe spoke about living Mashiach Dik, he says, "How are you going to bring Mashiach by living Mashiach Dik?" And people didn't understand what he meant. Oh, we got to learn about Mashiach, and, no, and the Rebbe was, "No, we have to live it." What did he mean? Add a little bit of knowledge, love, 
kindness to your actions. Why? Because when you do that, when you live Mashiach Dik, people around you look at you and say, hey, look at that guy. There's certain depth, a certain joy. Like you spoke about the joy and the pleasure. Yes, yeah. So look at that person. He's got it. And you see, he's got a smile. He's happy and he's warm and he's inviting. I want to live like that. That is bringing Mashiach because sooner or later you want to live that way and your neighbor wants to live that way and he wants to live that way and the world changes.